Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to create a Lambda function that will automatically resize images when they get uploaded to S3. To demonstrate, I have two buckets, one that stores the original image and one that stores the resized thumbnails. So I'll upload an image to the image bucket. I'll select this golf course. Let's verify that the image uploaded successfully. And there it is. Now we should see a resized thumbnail that was generated automatically by our Lambda. And there it is. The Lambda did this all behind the scenes without us having to directly invoke it. So if you guys wanna learn how to do that, stick around and let's get started. The way that this will work is a user is gonna upload a photo to our S3 bucket. Once the photo successfully uploads, the bucket will notify our Lambda saying that a new image was uploaded and it's gonna pass along the key. The Lambda will then take this key, fetch the original image from the bucket, then resize it and do any extra processing that it has to, and then store it in a new bucket. This new bucket will only store the resized versions of the original images. This is all possible thanks to Lambda triggers. A Lambda trigger is just something that triggers your Lambda when a specific event occurs. In our case, our trigger will be an S3 bucket and it will invoke our Lambda when a new image is uploaded. So we never have to call the Lambda ourselves because the trigger will automatically invoke it for us. Let's start by creating our S3 buckets. We'll go over to S3. Let's hit create bucket. And we're going to create our images bucket first that will store the original. We're going to call it demo user images bucket. Then we could leave all these settings as default and create the bucket. Now let's create the bucket that will store our thumbnails and we'll call it demo user thumbnails bucket. And then just hit create at the bottom. Now let's upload our first image to our images bucket. Let's view it just to make sure it uploaded correctly. And there we go. So this will be the base image that we are going to resize. Now let's create our Lambda. So I'm going to go to the Lambda console. Then click create function. We'll give it a name of demo image resizer lambda. We'll set the runtime to node 18. Now we need to add an execution role. And this is basically just a role that will give the lambda permission to access our buckets. Because by default, the lambda doesn't have permission to do anything unless we give it a role. Instead of using one of these options, let's go ahead and create our own custom role. So let's open IAM. We'll select Lambda as our service. For our role, we have to attach a policy to it, and a policy just defines a set of specific permissions. Let's go ahead and create a policy. Then click on the JSON tab, and if you look at the code that I put in the description, you'll see that there's a policy.json, and you're just going to copy that and paste it into our editor here. And this just defines some permissions for our Lambda like giving it access to send logs to CloudWatch. We're also giving it read access to a bucket that we define, and then we give it write access to a bucket. Let's replace these placeholder values with our actual bucket names. Our first bucket was demo user images, so I'm just gonna copy that over. And this forward slash star just means every object within the bucket. If we wanted to limit it to a certain prefix, then we could add that in here. Let's grab our other bucket. Now that we've changed those values, we should be good to go. We'll give the policy a name of image buckets policy because it gives access to our image buckets. Then let's hit create policy. Now that we made the policy, let's go ahead and attach it to our role. Let's refresh our list and then look up image buckets policy. There it is. Let's go ahead and select that. We don't need any tags 
and we'll give the role a name of image resizer lambda role. Then let's click create role. Once that's done, we could go ahead and attach that role to our Lambda. So we could hit use existing role. And we'll refresh this to make sure it catches it. And there it is. Then let's hit create function. Here's the Lambda dashboard. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you could see the source code that runs when the Lambda is invoked. Right now, it's just this default handler that they gave us. And we need to replace this with our own Lambda code. I have the finish handler linked in the description below so you guys can open up that repo and see what the handler does. I'm going to run through it real quick. And if you guys wanted to tweak the code and zip it up before deploying it to your Lambda, just note that if you're on Mac, when you install the dependencies, you have to pass these options to it. I was running into some issues when deploying to the Lambda, but this seemed to fix it. If you look at the index.js file, you'll see this is all the code that our Lambda runs. It uses the AWS S3 SDK to interact with our buckets. So we're instantiating a client here. We then define a destination bucket that we get from our environment variables. We have a thumbnail width and some supported file formats. In the handler, we take in an event. And this event will refer to the S3 put object event. So when a user uploads an object, it'll send our Lambda that event. If you're curious how this event looks like, we can go back to the console and hit test. Under template, look up S3 and then select S3 put. So the event is an object with a records property, which is an array with one object in it. On this object, we get the event time, the name, and a lot of other info. But what we want is the property under S3 and then the bucket name, and also the object key. So we need to parse these values from this nested structure. That's all that we're doing here. We're grabbing the event time and getting the source bucket. We're also sanitizing the object key just in case it has any weird characters or spaces. So this source key will have the clean key. We're also grabbing the file extension. Next, we log out the event just so we have a reference in our CloudWatch logs if we ever need to debug anything. Then we check if the file extension is included in our supported formats that we defined up here. If it's not included, then we're gonna log out this error and return out of the function. If it was a valid file type, then we try to fetch the original file from our source bucket. So we call the get object command and that's gonna return the image and the content type. We take the image body and call transform to byte array to get an array of bytes, which we then pass into sharp, which is our file resizer library. Then we chain some methods to resize the image, passing in our thumbnail width, and call to buffer. Now we could take this output buffer and store it in our destination bucket. So we'll call the put object command, pass in the destination bucket. For the key, we'll keep it the same as the source key, so we could map it over easily. And then we're passing the body and content type. So this will store this resized image in our destination bucket. And if that's a success, we're just going to log this successful message and return a 200. So that's it for the Lambda code. Now we're ready to deploy it. All we have to do to deploy is zip up this handler code and all the function dependencies. If you look at the package JSON, I have a script called package which will zip up our function and dependencies and output it to a file called function.zip. So if you wanted to tweak any code, all you'd have to do is open up the terminal and run npm run package, and that'll package everything up and put it in this zip. Now we just have to take this zip and upload it to our Lambda. We'll close out of that and then hit this upload from. We'll select zip file, and then we need to find that zip that we just created. And we'll hit save. Once that finishes uploading, we need to add an environment variable. If you look back at the code, you'll see that we define a destination bucket that we get from the environment. So we need to go and add this variable through the console. We just need to navigate to the configuration tab and then to environment variables and click edit. And then we'll add it in here. And our destination bucket was demo user thumbnails 
So I'm just going to paste that in, hit save, and now our Lambda should be good to go. To test our Lambda, we can navigate to the Test tab. Under Template, let's look up S3 and do S3 Put. Then all we have to change is the bucket name. In my case, I want to get Demo User Images. That will store the original images and also replace the ARN value here. For the key, I uploaded an image called golfcourse.jpg. So I'm going to copy that over for the key. Now that we have those set, it should resize that image. So we'll hit test. And we see a status 200 with our success message. Now let's actually go and check that bucket and verify that the image was resized. And there we go. So the Lambda code is working properly. And the last thing we have to do is add a trigger. Right now, this Lambda will never run unless we directly invoke it. But what we need to do is add a trigger so that whenever an image is uploaded to the bucket, it'll invoke our Lambda and pass in the event. So let's add a trigger. For the source, we'll select S3. For the bucket, I'm going to select the user images bucket. We don't need a prefix or a suffix, but if you guys wanted to customize the trigger behavior, you could set values for those. And we also have to check this box, which basically warns us against recursive invocation. This would happen if the input bucket that triggered our Lambda was the same one that the Lambda would write to when it was done. Because when the Lambda would write to the bucket, that would trigger another invocation, and that Lambda would write to the same bucket, and therefore go in an infinite loop. You can use the same bucket, but you'll have to use prefixes. For example, we could have a prefix called originals, and that would store all the original files, and the trigger would be under that prefix. Then when the Lambda resizes the image, it would store it in a prefix called thumbnails. So when the image is stored under thumbnails, it wouldn't trigger another invocation. But just to be safe, I created two separate buckets, and that's what AWS recommends. Let's click Add and test out the trigger. We'll go back to our bucket and upload a new image. I'll select this tiger. And I'll just open up the original image so you can see it there. And then in the thumbnails, we should see the smaller version. There we go. So our trigger works properly. That's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. It would help me out a ton. Let me know in the comments if you have any feedback or what you guys want to see next and I'll see you in the next one.